Hospital. Let us also remember and pray for those from our parish who have died recently, especially Claudia Hershizer and Dawn Hammond. Let us also pray for the intention for today's Mass, Tracy Marucci. Please join me in praying the prayer to St. Andrew, our patron, found on the back cover of the bulletin. O glorious St. Andrew, you were the first to recognize and follow the Lamb of God. With your friend, St. John, you remained with Jesus for that day, for your entire life, and now throughout eternity. As you led your brother, St. Peter, to Christ, and many others after him, draw us also to him. Teach us to lead others to Christ solely out of love for him and dedication in his service. Help us to learn the lesson of the cross and to carry our daily crosses without complaint so that they may carry us to Jesus. Amen.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be, be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty Lord and God, who are the source and origin of all life, whether of body or soul, we ask you to bless this water, which we use in confidence, to implore the forgiveness of our sins and to obtain the protection of your grace against all illness and every snare of the enemy. Grant, O Lord, in your mercy, that living waters may always spring up for our salvation, so that we may approach you with a pure heart and avoid all danger to body and soul. We ask this of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Waters of life, cleanse and refresh us, raise us to life in Christ Jesus.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We ask this of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witnesses to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. He said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not believe unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord. Do 
Can you recall like on Holy Thursday when Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples? How he washed their feet and Peter said, I should be washing your feet, Lord. And Jesus said, you have to serve. And blatantly, Peter said to him, well, then don't even wash my feet, but my hands and my face and my head as well. That's pretty boastful. And then they're around the table, and he says, someone's going to betray me. And one by one said, not me. I'm not going to betray you. Then they're in the garden. The Roman soldiers come. And Peter draws his sword and cuts off one of the, Malchus. Cuts off Malchus's ear. And the Lord reprimands Peter for doing this. And he performs another miracle by putting the ear back on Malchus. Then they all ran. They all ran and none of them stood with Jesus except the youngest disciple, John, stood at the cross and watched Jesus die. And all those ones who were very boastful, those ones who would protect Jesus at all costs, ran. And then we get this gospel today about Jesus appearing to his apostles. In that first part, they were behind locked doors. They didn't really quite understand what it meant to rise from the dead. They understood one thing, that they were afraid, afraid that they might be crucified too, and there they are behind locked doors. Which Jesus said to them, peace be with you. Remain calm. I am here with you. The apostles rejoiced, and then Jesus went on to say to them, you know, you have to go out and you have to preach about me. I give you the Holy Spirit in a certain way. The Holy Spirit will come upon you in a greater way at Pentecost. But whose sins you are retained, they are retained. Whose sins that you don't forgive, they're not forgiven. And it says, like Thomas wasn't there. And the disciples rejoiced, you know, saying, Thomas, we have seen the Lord again. He is risen. He gave us a directive. And out of the mouth of Thomas, I can't believe. I can't believe that you've seen him. I will believe if I can take my hand and put it in the nail marks and put my hand on his side. Then I will believe. Again, a week later. And again, it starts the same way. The disciples and the apostles are behind locked doors. Even Jesus, you know, encouraged them the week before. They're still behind locked doors because they're afraid that they're going to be crucified. And Jesus says something real simple again. Peace be with you. Calm down. I'm with you. He looks at Thomas and he says, hey, Thomas, come over here. I want you to put your finger into my nail marks. I want you to put your hand at my side. Come on, Thomas, do this. And Thomas was ashamed. He didn't believe his other apostles 
And Jesus came and offered the same gift, peace be with you, and offered himself to Thomas. Thomas's words weren't too many. He simply said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus went on to say, blessed are those who have not seen and believe. I think about this locked door stuff. They were so afraid, and yet they saw Christ himself after he rose again from the dead. And did the apostles totally believe? Some of them probably did believe, and some of them were probably like Thomas, not totally believing in Jesus himself. And yet as Jesus spoke to his apostles while he was still living, he always said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And on Pentecost Sunday, after receiving the Holy Spirit, their lives were totally changed. Their eyes were totally open that they realized that Jesus had risen from the dead and that they themselves possessed this gift of rising again with him and being part of his kingdom. If they only believe, if they only say to themselves over and over and over again, my Lord and my God. And when you read the Acts of the Apostles, those men who are behind locked doors, those men who were afraid. After they received the Holy Spirit, and like in that first reading, can you imagine bringing together all these people and saying to each and every individual, I want you to be part of my church. Give whatever you have, money, food, and they did. And they came together and they broke bread. And they rejoiced in the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead. Those same fellows behind locked doors, going on and preaching in the temple area, imprisoned and flogged, that their lives were truly changed and they talked about our Lord. But here we are today. We might be like a Thomas doubting. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all on a journey just like the apostles. And on that journey, I hope that each and every one present in this church can live with those words that Thomas said. I ain't got nowhere to go. I've seen you, and you are my Lord and my God. Because as Jesus said, blessed are they who have not seen and believe. My friends, that's us. We haven't seen, but we believe. And we're left with those same words. My Lord and my God. May God bless you. Let us stand and profess our faith together. We believe in one Lord. We believe in one thing. One thing. <clears throat> Born of the Father, be for all ages. God from God, life from life, true God from true God. He God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all the wings, God's man of salvation. He came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit, the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
He was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. That's where the scripture is. He ascended to heaven and he seated at the right hand of God. And from heaven he brings a right to us who living in his end and his kingdom will have him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who sees in the Father of his life. I spoke with the prophets. I believe in one of the Lord God the Apostolic Church. And that's why I'm not just here for doing these sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us offer a prayer's petition to the Father. Our response is Lord, hear our prayer that the church may be bearers of God's mercy to all who need it most, especially those who find themselves doubting God's presence in their lives or in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon, the upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities, sharing what we have so that no person goes needy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly initiated Catholics, especially Riley, Lisa, and Leroy, that their faith may be strengthened in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in priestly vocation in the Diocese of Pittsburgh. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many affected by the heavy rains, accidents, and fires, that they may begin to rebuild their lives with hope and trust in God's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on our earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for another week in our lives. Please continue to bless us and grant us all our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Peace of the feet, the hands, the side. Thou art my Lord and God, he cried. Alleluia. How blessed are they who have not seen, and yet whose faith has constant been, for they Brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people will exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy our Lord, and all you have created, right it gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, set from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice and be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For a night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you wrote to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, St. Andrew, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. For our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to share forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in all the world all that is good. Through heaven, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Savior's command for him by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold, I am God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.